lovely. So let's just start on the mat and sit on your heels if you can, if that's okay for your knees. And if it's not, then you can just sit in a normal seated comfortable position. So perhaps just take a while to settle down into your mat. Feel the comfort of the earth beneath you and the way that that sort of springs you up at the same time. So knowing that you can press down into something gives you a sort of bounce, sort of levity, a pull, an extension. And see if that extension can run all the way up your spinal column. So you feel your crown reaches that little bit higher. I'd like to see if you can cultivate ujjayi breath. So this is a breath that we use when um, we only breathe through the nose. And if you've got a blocked nose, it won't work for you today. So you just go with what's right for you. Just let all the exhale go from your lungs. And then take an inhale through the nose. Now we're going to just do it through our mouth just one time. I'd like you to breathe on your hands if you're moisting up a mirror. Can you feel a swelling sensation in the throat? Have another go. As you breathe in through your nose, think about widening through the bridge of the nose and then exhale. And as you do exhale like that, you also broaden your, the back of your throat. So you have this kind of real feeling like an oceanic sound that you create, that you're very spacious around this area. So inhale again through the nose. Open the mouth, go as if you're going to steam up your hands, and then at the last minute, shut the mouth. And you may well hear this sort of swelling ocean sound reverberate a little bit more in the um, throat and neck area. So just take a couple more minutes here to practice this breath. Inhale, draw up through the nose and then keep the lips shut if you can and exhale. Let that air swell around the throat, the neck. There's almost a slightly, um, to describe it, a kind of pushing down sensation with that exhale. So you're almost pushing the breath down. So I'm placing my palms so you can see this is where I can feel the breath. So the Ujjayi breath is a really nice way to keep the heat of your practice in. And you can practice it for as, can you practice it for as long as you can today? And I'll try and remind you to cue that inhalation in through the nose and out through the nose. If I'm counting breaths and you drop away from my count, that's fine. But can you try and keep the Ujjayi breath until you just don't want to do it any longer? Okay, it, takes, it does take practice. It takes an extra level of focus. So let's just do two more rounds of that breath. Inhaling through the nose, cue the breath from the belly. And exhale through the nose. See if you can just relax the shoulders, soften your gaze and the jaw. Really draw the air up through the nasal tunnels. And then exhale. So the breath you draw in through your nose is a lot cleaner than if you draw it in through your mouth because that's what your, your hair is there for. There's an action filtration system. So to fire up the, um, the navel air center, you can have your knees down or we're going to extend the legs and come into spine. So inhale and draw the navel up to the spine. Extend the heels away from you. Make sure your shoulders are above your wrists. Inhale with your ujjayi breath. Exhale. Inhale, we're going to try and do five breaths. Exhale. Hold in the core. Inhale, this is your third breath. Or if you get to five before me, you can transition into downward facing dog. Push yourself away from the earth. Feel that spring up that you have from the support of the earth. Then lift the hips, walk the feet, just so that they're hip distance apart, the feet parallel, the hips are rising up into the air. Inhale through the nose, your ujjayi breath. Exhale. 
draw the shoulders away from the ear from the shoulder blades down towards the waist inhale cue the breath from the navel center draw the navel to spine exhale inhale think about drawing up from the earth lifting up with the sit bones exhale inhale one more time here and exhale just drop the knees down and come into child's pose take the weight off the arms Rela relax the forehead down your ujjayi breath so in through the nose and out through the nose that swelling oceanic sound When you're ready, can you tuck your toes and draw up once again into Adha Mukha Shavasana. So that's downward facing dog. Again, just check with your posture. So to protect your wrists, make sure that your thumbs are pressing down into the mat, nice and straight. Fingers spread nice and wide. So the distribution of the weight is through the palms. So it's not all in the wrists. Take some of the weight into the legs, the feet. Feel the heels drop, extend down towards the earth. Inhale that core. Exhale. Inhale one more time. And then exhale. Can you come stand at the top of the mat and gently inhale, rise up. Exhale. Come to stand at the top of the mat. Sorry, I can't see you very well. I need, a, I need something to lift me up. So in your Tadasana here, come back to your Ujjayi breath. Inhale. And exhale. Lovely. Drop the tailbone, draw the navel center in. Inhale, lift the arms up. Surya Namaskara A, Sun Salutation A, exhale, fold forward, so gaze to your navel, cue your belly button drawing in, inhale, can you lift halfway, exhale, can you return to plank, you can have your knees lowered if you like, then lower down the upper body and you can inhale into cobra or up dog, gaze lifts and chest us too, exhale, can you roll over, your toes back into downward facing dog. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Remember your ujjayi breath. Exhale. Inhale, three. This is where it's so nice to be with you right now, to hear you practicing. Exhale, take the gaze to the top of the mat. Step up, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up the arms, look up to the arms and exhale, come to standing. Inhale, lift up, look up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back into plank. And lower down, inhale, engage the core, lift it away from the mat when you're in cobra or upward facing dog. And look up, exhale, roll over the toes and come back to downward facing dog. Inhale, one. Remember your alignment cues, so make sure your feet are hip width apart, your palms are spread, index fingers pointing forward, thumb presses into the mat. One more inhalation here, exhale, and then can you take your gaze to the top of the mat? See if you can hop. Bring your feet quietly up to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, draw up. Look up to the thumbs and exhale. Let's swan dive into our third sun salutation. A, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, keep the core strong and see if you can hop to the back of your mat into plank. Nice, lower down. And then can you inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Three of your own breaths. Are you still with your ujjayi breath? Inhale, one. Really think about your core. So really activate through the navel center as you breathe. 
Keep it soft but strong. When we're trying to balance this um, center of ours, we want to keep thinking about soft but strong. At the base of your third exhalation, take your gaze forward and you hop or step to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Now I'd like you to step back again into plank. Now this is a challenge. If your knees are dropped, why don't we all just drop our knees for a moment? Lay your forearms on the ground, interlace your fingers, and then tuck your toes so you can extend your legs. So this is a forearm plank. Inhale, keep the navel strong. Exhale, heels drawing away. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, one more time. And then exhale, take your gaze to your navel and see if you can, can you walk your feet up? So you're in a more of a downward facing dog position. So it's a bit like dolphin, inhale. Let that core be active. Exhale, draw it into the spine. Two more breaths here. Inhale. Exhale, one more breath here. You need to drop to the knees at any time, please do so. Inhale and exhale. Come onto your palms into a regular downward facing dog. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, one more breath here. Inhale, three. Exhale. Okay. On your next inhale, can you lift your right leg up nice and high and then step it in between the hands. Come into warrior one base. We're just going to inhale and lift the arms up and then exhale, rotate into warrior two. So your stance broadens, your hips are more in line with the long side of the mat. Inhale, flip your front palm and reach back into reverse warrior, peaceful warrior. And then in your exhale, let your right arm come forward and to the outer edge of your right foot and the left hand reaches up and over. Inhale, and then exhale, place both palms to frame the front foot. Turn the back foot so it's pointed, the toes point towards the front of the mat. Step back into plank. Can you lower down, inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale into downward facing dog. If you need to drop or you'd like to drop into child's pose for a couple of breaths, please do. Otherwise, a couple of breaths here in Adha Mukha Shvasana. And then we can move over to the other side. So we're going to, in a moment, repeat that on the left hand side with the left leg easy. Ah, so you should feel some nice heat generated now and hopefully particularly in the core. So everyone into downward facing dog, inhale, lift the left leg up nice and high and then can you step it through into your warrior one position. Inhale, draw the arms up, exhale, rotate into warrior two. So you can move your left foot a little more centrally into the mat for your alignment. Inhale, flip the left palm up and over. Reverse warrior, peaceful warrior. Exhale, lower the left palm to the outer edge of the left foot. And then inhale, the right arm up and over the ear. Exhale, place the palms either side of the front foot and rotate the toes so they're facing the front of the mat. So you're looking at a low lunge. Step back and lower down into plank. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So we're going to practice once more each side just to get used to that sequence, that moving and flowing. See if you can find beauty in the connection and the transitions. Inhale, lift the right leg up, draw it into the chest and step it forwards into warrior one position. Exhale and then inhale, draw the arms up, look up to the thumbs and exhale into warrior two, 90 degree bend over the ankle. 
Can you then flip the front arm, hum upwards, and inhale back into your peaceful warrior. Exhale, the front palm comes to the outer edge of the front foot, and then inhale, let the left arm reach up over the ear. And can you try and keep the crown and the hip in line with each other? Exhale, place palms to frame the front foot, turn the back toes to face the front of the mat, step back into plank. If you want to take a vinyasa, do, otherwise go straight into downward facing dog. So lower down, inhale, upward dog or cobra. And then exhale into down facing dog. Let's just take a couple of breaths. Smooth it out. Perhaps can you remind yourself of your ujjayi breath? Cue your breath from your belly, nice and soft and strong. Inhale, the left leg draws up and steps in between the palms. Come into your warrior one. On an inhale, lift up. Exhale, can you rotate and make your foundations towards the warrior two posture? Gaze over the front fingertips. Then can you flip the front palm up? Inhale, reverse warrior, peaceful warrior. Exhale, place that front palm to the outer edge of the left foot. Inhale, draw the right arm up and over. So crown is in line with the hips, fingertips reaching forward. You press down with the outer edge of the back foot. Exhale, take the palms to frame the front foot. Rotate the toes to face the front, the, sh the front short edge of the mat. And then step back. Once again, yogi choice. You can do a vinyasa with me or go straight into downward facing dog. Ah, lovely. Inhale. <coughs> Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Allow yourself to drop down onto your knee. Feet um, together, knees wide apart. Just take a few moments to feel the ground support you. Really let yourselves melt into the earth. So the Manipura Chakra is related to kind of like kind of the gem or the fire of our um, souls, of our beings. And if we are having too much in this area, we can come across as overly assertive, perhaps aggressive, domineering. And if we don't have enough, we can feel indecisive and we end up not knowing what to do and perhaps failing to do anything, like procrastination station. <laughs> so by even going through this sequence with me, you'll hopefully get to a place where you feel both strong but soft at the same time. So that's a sense of equanimity between these forces. Let's inhale, come up into Adho Mukha Svasana. So that's downward facing dog, but only briefly. And then can you um, walk yourselves just to the middle of the mat, feet hip width apart. Sink the hips down, inhale the arms up. So a bit like coming into chair pose, but we're just gonna keep sinking the hips down until you make good contact with the earth. Come on to the sit bones, so not further back, and find the place where you feel that sense of equilibrium I just mentioned. So equanimity, equilibrium, when you feel in that space where you're, not either, you're neither too far forward nor too far backwards, you get this lift, you kind of feel free. And that's the state that we want to work towards. So inhale, let the arms draw forward. Do right and active right through to the fingertips. The little fingers pointing down, the thumbs on top, and keep the feet just floating above the earth. When you're ready, can you extend the legs? So you still bend to the knees, and the lower leg are parallel with the earth. Then come back to your chest and think about somebody tying string around your thoracic spine where your bra strap is, and then just pulling it up so you feel lift in the chest, lovely. And if you want to, you can extend the legs. Inhale, maybe five breaths. Exhale, keep your drishti, your focus, your toes, all straight ahead of you. Keep lifting with every breath in. The chest expands and shines forward. Draw the shoulder blades together behind the back. 
Lovely. Now, we're going to lower down incrementally. I need to move forwards because I'm going to hit my head. So we're going to lower down legs and arms until your back is on the ground, but your legs are still lifted. Draw your fingers, your palms together into prayer pose and hold them. Five, four, three, two, one. Draw the knees up into the armpits and relax in the core. So that's your strength and softness, the expansion and the contraction. A reminder that we need both. And I think a lot of us can feel like we're getting downs at the moment, but we need the downs so that we can have the ups. So these reminders of opposites being absolutely necessary, the light and the dark. Let's inhale and draw ourselves up and come into a squat position. So part of what's um, fun about building the core and the heat in our practice is that we can maybe try and do some things that we haven't done before. So one of them, and these are forearm balances, one of them, a little bit like crows, and perhaps just wriggle a minute or two in your malasana and feel this open sense in your hips. Now what I'd like you to do is to walk your hands underneath your legs so that you have your palms on the outer edge of your feet. How's that feeling? Can you sit down on your upper arms? So there's quite a bit of weight going through your wrists right now. Just make sure that you're spreading the fingers nice and wide and that your thumbs are placed down nice and heavily. So eventually, you're going to lift up your feet and just lock them. And then five breaths. So maybe just try lifting one foot and then the other, a little bit like you do when you're practicing crow, which we're going to come into next. Feel that lift and hold in your core. To come out, place weight into the feet and unravel the arms and just stretch back into downward facing dog just for a moment. I wish I was with you. It'd be so nice to see how you're finding this experiment. So let's walk back to the front of the mat and we'll come into our crow practice. So once again, sink down into your malasana and again, just ease through the hips and feel your collection and closeness to the floor, okay? Um, a lot of things that come into our minds at this time is fear, so fear of falling. It's not very far to fall. The other thing that we've built up is this connection to our core. So when you're coming into any arm balance, your core wants to be active all the way through. So even right now, I'm telling my core to get ready for balasana, crow pose. Uh, sorry, not called balasana. <laughs> it's called bakasana. So we want to spread your fingertips nice and wide, index fingers pointing forward. Make sure that your thumbs are pressing down. And then we're going to, good shot, I can see getting in there already. Lift up the hips, come up onto your tiptoes and practice lining up your upper arm and your knee. So your knees just slot neatly into your armpit. Look how we're made to do this pose. Keep your gaze lifted. So if I look down in between my legs or at my feet, that's where I'm going to go. If I look forwards and I hold with my core, I can keep that sense of lift as I extend both feet off the earth. Let the breath be smooth. Remember, as you let go into the earth, it will provide you with lift. If you fall out, come back in, practice, try. Do something today that scares you. <laughs> That's lovely. Okay. So just come out of that now and take some, take a moment to have a rest. So draw the soles of the feet together and have a moment in Sutta Just let your 
Spine release into the earth, lift up your hips, move them further away from the shoulders. And feel this beautiful openness in the front body. Let go of whatever has just been, okay? So whether you feel like it was a success or a failure, certainly let any of that narrative go. And then perhaps tune into whether you were challenged and that sense of effort and ease. And then let any of that sense just drop away too. So leave that pose behind. It will be there for you the next time you come to try it. But overthinking things is, is the first way to block ourselves from that sense, that beautiful sense of equanimity that we're looking for, of just being in pose in the moment. A suspended elegance, I like to think of it as. So lift your knees together by lifting up the outside of the thighs and then draw the knees back into the armpit and come into happy baby pose. So let your arms come inside the legs and take hold of the outside edge of the feet. Just have a little wriggle and a wobble there. Feel, this is just like crow almost. You could push your feet up towards the ceiling. Keep the knees bent, but turn your feet upright. And that is crow on your back. Very similar anyway. So that's a very similar feeling you've got going there. Draw the knees together and place the feet down and we'll just do a couple of rounds of bridge. So place the palms down by the sides. If you have a wheel practice, then what I'd like you to do, I'm not going to do it today, but if you would like to incorporate it into your practice, then after you've done your first bridge pose, you can move into that. So with the arms placed down by the side and the feet nice and parallel, we know the drill by now, we inhale, really push the navel into the earth so you feel the, lumb the lumbar spine peeling up off and then with your exhale, let the hips draw up, your chin to your chest and your gaze is straight up, right? Exhale and then can you unravel the spine, feel the vertebra, release into the mat one by one. Inhale, the navel draws into the earth. And if you're going to practice your wheel, you can do that now. Let the lumbar spine lift up and the hips rise, the knees push away. You feel long in the thighs. So if you're in wheel, hold it for five to 10 breaths. If you're keeping with your bridge, draw the shoulders closer together. Interlace the fingers behind the spine. Let the navel feel like it's got a string attached to it. And inhale, lift, float up away from your foundation, that strong foundation in contact with the earth. Exhale, inhale, three to five breaths here. Exhale, inhale. Lovely. Exhale and release the palms. Inhale, keep the hips lifted. And the four of the arms and the fingertips point up towards the sky. And then exhale, let the arms come behind you and take opposite elbows. So all the while, your hips are lifted and your gaze is upright. So you're still in bridge, but your arms are above your head and you're grasping opposite elbow. Inhale, lift the hips. And then exhale, let the spine lower down vertebra by vertebra. Push the shoulders into the earth. Feel that nice connection with the earth. But also now this nice lift in the torso. Inhale. Let your hips, let everything settle into the earth. Exhale, melt down. Inhale, just walk your, so your feet together so your knees are together. And then exhale, see if you can hold on to your opposite elbow and take your gaze over to your left and your knees over to your right. So a little spinal twist. If you prefer to let go of your elbows and come into a cactus, so extend your arms out, shoulder height, see if that's preferable for your shoulders. A bit more space. We're just wringing out the spine after that nice long, that deep flexion. Inhale, the knees come up to center, and exhale, take the gaze 
to the opposite side and the knees over to the left. So see, can you feel the softness in your belly now? It's quite a passive pose. So we've gone from active to passive, these contrasts. Okay, it's not to exaggerate, but it's just to remind us of our suppleness. Then inhale, can you let the knees come back up to the center? And once again, draw yourself back into happy baby pose and take this opportunity to massage the lower back, the lumbar spine, where you've been breathing into it and extending, um, sorry, flexing the spine. Lovely. Then can you draw your knees into your chest and roll along the spine on the mat. Just again, think of it as a massage and you want to, can you aim for each vertebra to massage along the floor in this roll? So when you've done sort of eight or nine of these rolls, you'll know pretty well where you're, that you've kind of aimed for each vertebra. So if you've got to your third or fourth and there's a part that you just haven't touched, See if on your next roll you can soften your spine into the earth. And on your final one, come back up to where we were before. And so you're sitting on your sit bones, your feet are just lifted off the earth. You can have your arms around your knees. Take a hold of your toes and see if you can extend into a supported nasa, so variation of bridge pose. Engage with the core, keep your gaze up towards your toes. Lift the chest up through the forearms. Inhale, lovely everyone. Exhale. So really push the heels away from you. Feel this lovely openness in the back of the legs. Inhale. Exhale. Couple more breaths here. Can you come to your Ujjayi breath? In through the nose. Spaciousness. Exhale through the nose. Feel this swelling, this swelling oceanic sound over the throat. Keep drawing the chest forwards and upwards. And then draw the knees back in, so um, draw, bend the knees, draw the feet back in towards you. Let your feet touch the earth. Send the legs out in front of you. And just take a couple of moments feeling like a really nice support from that solid ground. Palms down by the side, push through the palms as well. Feel your connection through the underside of the legs and the palms. And with every push down, remember there's that spring up. So extension through the arms, through the spine, tuck the chin, can you lengthen through the back of the neck? You want to close your eyes for a minute and just feel this sense of symmetry. So action and ease. If we can learn to move like this through our lives, it creates much smoother relationships with ourselves and with others a strength and a softness. Lovely. Let's just walk those legs nice and wide now. So if you want to get yourself a prop or something to help you enjoy the forward fold, we're actually gonna hold it quietly for around two minutes, maybe a little less. So it's a kind of restorative version of the posture. We'll start off with a nice, strong, long, straight spine. Inhale, nice big soft breath in through the belly. Lift through the spine, tuck the chin. Toes pointing up, knees pointing up. Roll the thighs outwards and then exhale. Can you start to pad your fingertips forwards into your forward fold? You hinge from the hips, hinge from the hips. And when you're ready, can you melt down towards the earth? So any way that you like to feel supported, you may like to bend up your elbows and catch your, palm, your head and your palms. 
It can be really nice to pop your forehead in your palms, particularly one palm over the center of the brow, which is where it said the third eye is. Placing pressure here helps build focus and concentration and quietens the mind. If you want to uh, come into the full um, expression of the posture with your forehead on the air, you can let your arms walk away from you still further. You'll feel a bit more of a drape through the upper ribs, extension of the intercostal muscles. But that's not to say that you're getting um, a better experience or a worse experience. We want to try and kind of draw back from those external uh, measurements of success. We really just want to make it feel like what is right for you. And I want this to feel like an integrated practice as well. So think about what's best for your state of being right now. If you need a bit more of a restorative practice or a bit more of a challenge, comfort and ease, challenge and ease, for me, challenge and ease every step of the way. So can you now bring the focus to the back of the body and feel the breath expand in the ribcage of the back of the body? Feel that cooling sensation over the core as it has a rest. So this time the focus is on the back body, the posterior chain of muscles in the legs and the back, the spine. Lovely. We're going to walk back up and then draw your right knee in towards your left thigh. Extend your left arm out towards your left foot. So if you can catch your toes, but otherwise ankle, shin or thigh. Now I want you to bend your elbow so that you can feel a crease in your upper body as you lean down towards your extended left leg. And then inhale, draw the right arm up and over and keep really soft in the neck. But can you make sure that your right hip is heavy into the earth, so it's not peeling away? And that usually means that you feel an emphasis in the stretch around the waist. So that area where we feel joined by upper and lower body. Now can you still maintain that connection between the torso and the pelvis? Of course, we are all one. Keep the breath coming from the navel. Draw it up through the chest, the throat, and think about it coming even through the crown. And exhale, soften as you get this nice lateral stretch through the body, through the upper body. We're just going to take one more breath here in your own time. And to come out of it, we inhale the right arm up and over in a sort of rainbow shape. And then exhale, let your spine draw upright. So walk, can you now walk your uh, right knee so it's pointing forwards in the center of your mat and your right toes will be drawing behind your left hip and then hop your left leg over your right. Okay. So we're going to take a slightly different version of this posture. We often go across the body, but this time we're going to do an open twist. So you want to take your left arm and catch the outer edge, sorry, the um, instep of your left foot. Can you do that? So you're already getting quite a turn in the upper body. So you're pressing down with your left foot into the earth and you're catching. You could, you could also take the left ankle or if you like, you can bend up at the elbow and press the knee and the elbow together. See which variation works best for you. And then we extend the right arm up and exhale behind us. So we're feeling quite spacious in the navel center. Once again, this is a more cooling action for your navel. Draw your back of your head round so your gaze is now towards the back of the space. Okay. 
Lovely. When you're ready, can you unravel? And you're just going to lift up your left leg, extend your right leg out. So we're going to come into the twisted Janusha Jasna variation on the opposite side. So let your right elbow sink down and then let your left arm come up and over. I'm conscious due to the technical hitch that we may be a couple of minutes behind. It's um, 12.45 right now, so if you have an appointment you need to get to, then please just take a couple of moments in Shavasana and let yourself both slowly transition kindly off the mat. But if you can stay with me, we'll just do a couple more minutes. We'll take this lovely twist in the Janusha Shashna and the um, Matsya Drasana. And then we'll take Shavasana. So let's just see what's right for you right now. Let your left hip again sink down into the earth. Enjoy the lateral stretch. Just take note of if you feel any difference from the beginning of the session. Inhale, let the left arm draw up. Exhale, draw the spine upright. And then hop the right leg over. So draw the left knee into the center of the mat. Let the right hip heavy down. And then hop the right foot over the left knee. So we're coming to that twist on the opposite side. You can use your right elbow, the inside edge of the right knee, or extend the arm down, keeping that pressure with the elbow and the knee. And then inhale the left arm up. Exhale it behind you, draw up the spine, and then rotate. So in this version of the posture, your belly has more space, less compression. Round and out of the pose. So if you would like to take a slightly different version of a relaxation posture today, um, the Prita Karani is a really nice thing to do. That's the Sanskrit for basically legs up against the wall. Um, and if you're going to do that, you just draw yourself side, sideways onto a wall. So your hips are right against the wall. And then you swing yourself down so that your legs go up. And you just take, take your relaxation in an inverted pose. So this is a nice way to kind of lower blood pressure. Also to kind of get a nice new flush of blood to the head. We usually have more blood in our legs from doing more standing. You can also draw your feet together and come into a variation of Sutta Baddha Konasana from there. Or if you like, you can come into your regular Shavasana. So perhaps let yourselves kind of Take a moment to reflect on the theme behind this practice, the Manipura Chakra, and the sense of intending, the intention to cultivate equanimity. So equanimity is something very closely related to resilience. But when you meet the challenges that arise in our lives with a sense of equanimity, we can see both sides of the coin and we can carry on with grace. So by being both very active in the forearm balances and the dancing warrior sequence, we create a sense of fire and activity in the core. 
But then by coming into our restorative side of the practice, we allow ourselves to feel the softer elements. And where, just like where the sky and the earth meet, where the strong and the soft feet, you have this beautiful horizon. Can you now let any sort of narrative in your mind just drop away for a moment? Can you soften through the jaw and the tongue and the eyes and the brow? Notice how your belly rises and falls very naturally without being cued. And how that lifts up to the torso, over the shoulders, the back of the head, over the front of the head, and lands on the chest. This wave of breath over the back of the body, over the crown of the head, onto the chest. Drop away any effort or focus on breath. See if you can just exist that sense of suspended elegance, neither here nor there, just being. If you can stay in your Shavasana for a bit longer, that's a luxury, please do it, a free luxury. Otherwise, come with me, inhale, draw the arms up overhead, extend the feet away from you, feel a nice stretch to the sides of the body, with armpits, openness in the front body. Exhale, draw the knees into the armpits, and then roll over onto your side. Let the head be soft as you inhale, and come to a seated position. It's always wonderful to practice with you. It feels like a really nice way to start the week, even though we're already on Tuesday. <laughs> but hopefully you'll be back again to practice and um, do let me know in the meantime if you have any feedback. Go easy and keep well. Thank you. Namaste.